the first ever Canadian Premier League fall season has concluded. And Calgary Cavalry FC are the champions of the fall season. This inaugural season for the CPL was just an absolutely incredible one. I think it exceeded a lot of people's expectations for what this league was going to be. I thought that overall it was just an absolutely fantastic campaign. A lot of great storylines. Yes, there was a problem with parity as two teams seemed to just run away with it very early on the season. I'll get to that. But Overall, for the first season of a fledging league in uh, professional soccer taking off in a new country, this was a success, in my opinion. So I'm just going to review how the season went for each team, looking at the standings. Uh, I don't have my whiteboard on me, so for this video, we're going to try something new. Ta-da! I know, it's the 21st century. Coming in first place in the fall season with 38 points, the Calgary Cavalry. The Cavalry just from day one were the cream of the crop of the CPL. They were the best team, game in, game out, week in, week out. The only team that really seemed to pose any sort of a threat to them is the Hamilton Forge. And they deservingly pulled off both the spring season championship and the fall season championship. Now, in my opinion, right now, because they won both halves, the season should be done and Calgary should be crowned CPL champions. Now, I know a lot of people have been criticizing this fall and spring season format, the Apertura Clausera, but I actually personally really like it. I see a lot of potential for this format. But the one thing I don't like about this format this year is that even though one team, Calgary, won both the spring and fall seasons, they don't automatically win the league. The second place team overall gets to play them for the chance to be CPL champions, which means now, of course, Calgary, after winning both the spring and the fall regular seasons, may not even be crowned the champions of the CPL, which in my opinion is just ridiculous. Calgary won both the spring and fall seasons. It's an absolutely incredible achievement. And because of that, I think they should deserve to win the CPL championship. Honestly, like I'm a Forge fan and I'm saying Calgary should win this game. They deserve it because just, if you win both the spring and fall seasons and then you don't win the CPL championship, that's just bull crap. Like that shouldn't be a thing. In second place with 37 points in the fall season, Forge FC. Hamilton came in second in both the spring and fall seasons. In the fall, they were so much closer than they were in the spring. They had first place. They beat Calgary on their last match day. Going into the final weekend games of the year, Calgary was two points behind Forge, but they had one game in hand and they got the win and passed Forge for first place. But Hamilton, fantastic season. Tristan Borges with the golden boot. After spending a year or two in Portugal, just training with teams there, but not getting a chance to play professionally, Tristan Borges came back to Canada this year to prove that he was an elite player and that he deserves a chance to play in Europe. And I think Golden Boot, he was just Hamilton's MVP all season. Fantastic player. The price of your ticket to a Hamilton Forge game was completely dependent on whether or not Tristan Borges was playing. And I think he was by far and away probably the best player in the CPL this year. And I know there are a lot of rumors that he'll probably be leaving for Europe this winter. Honestly, he deserves it. He came back to Canada to play in the first season of the CPL on a mission, and I think this was mission accomplished. He proved that he is one of the best players Canada has to offer. In third place in the fall season, York 9 with 23 points. After a rough spring season and then a rough start to start off the fall, York 9 seemed to figure things out down the stretch. They really, you know, they came together quite a bit, and getting third place in the fall season for them is a great accomplishment. That third place to seventh place in the CPL is so, so tight. All those teams really on any given day, any one of them could beat any other one of them. They're just all basically at the same level. And that just fight for third place was a war and York 9 came in on top, props to them. They had a better fall season than I was expecting, honestly. 
They had some big performances, and for a team that was in danger of becoming the laughing stock of the CPL, they put up a pretty decent fall season. And I think because of that, this team has shown that there's a lot of room for them to improve in the future, and I have a feeling that next season's York 9 will be actually a very competitive one. In fourth place of 20 points, Pacific FC. Now, Pacific FC was supposed to be a pretty good team going into this season, and they just never really found their footing. They struggled all throughout. The injury to Marcel de Jong right in training, losing him, he was going into the season, Marcel de Jong was the biggest name in the CPL. And for Pacific FC to lose him for the entire season right off the bat in training camp, that was just a blow that they could not recover from. Losing a player of his caliper in this league is just deadly. And I feel like if Pacific FC had Marcel Dion this entire season, it would have gone completely differently for them. But all in all, it was just a disappointing season for Pacific. They fired their coach, Silberbauer, on Friday, the day before the last game of the season. That is very weird for a brand new league to have a coach get fired after year one, because like in year one, everyone's figuring things out. If you underperform, it's probably not the coach's fault. And just the fact that he got canned after the first season just shows that this team, I guess there was a disconnect between the coach and management. And I hope that next year with Marcel Dion back and recovered and a fresh coach behind the bench, hopefully they'll be able to turn this around because their stadium is starting to look fantastic. The renovations, the new end coming up, it all looks great. They need to fill it, and the best way to fill stadiums is to win. In fifth place of 19 points, the Winnipeg Valor. Unfortunately for Winnipeg, their biggest piece of news this fall season was losing 8-0 to home against Calgary. This was just a disappointing campaign through and through for the Valor. I thought they were going to do a lot better than they did this season, but they just weren't able to find their footing. Stephen Hoyle was a disappointment for them right off the bat, and he was supposed to be their big international striker. They let him go after the spring season. Michael Petrasso was fantastic, but with the exception of maybe him and Dylan Sacramento, this team just was not very good. And now there's talk about the CPL possibly implementing a rule to limit the number of over 33 international players on your squad, despite the fact that there are only four of them in the league and three of them play for Winnipeg. So good job, Rob Gale. You're making the CPL make new rules because of you. In sixth place, FC Edmonton with 18 points. Edmonton was such a weird team this year because they were the only team in the CPL that had existed prior to the CPL. They were the resurrection of the old NASL FC Edmonton. They took a year off in 2018 after the NASL folded to wait for the CPL to start up. Uh, they basically jumped around the CPL train right away, unlike another professional team, Ottawa. But because they had an established fan base and an established system, because they were already a team prior to the CPL starting, you really would have thought that they would be a good competitor in the CPL. But I guess having to take a year off, you lose most of your players because of that, that just hurt them and they couldn't really turn around after that year off. And a point per game pace is just not very good at all. Again, when a new league starts up, you always wanna put your money on the established team and just Edmonton, I, I don't know, they just, didn't have it this year. I feel like, again, Edmonton has potential to become a decent team down the road, but their overall performance this season just isn't going to cut it. And in last place in the fall season of 17 points, the Halifax Wanderers. The Wanderers started play this season and they won the hearts of the Halifax locals. The only team in the CPL to come close to selling out every game. Wanderers grounds was always packed Every game there had a crazy atmosphere. It's just unfortunate that the on-field performance of this team could not match the hype of the fans supporting them. The Wanderers took an interesting approach of basically having all of their international signings being from the Trinidad and Tobago national team. They tried to balance it out with a nice 
mixture of young local signings and it's a shame that it didn't work out but I feel like with just the following that this team's accumulated it's a shame if they don't turn themselves into a contender very soon and even though they had a disappointing season I feel like with the fan base they've accumulated Halifax has more motivation than anyone to go into the winter break make some big signings and turn themselves into a contender and yeah that's how each team performed this fall season, which leads us up to a CPL Finals matchup of Calgary versus Hamilton. Again, I am a Hamilton Forge fan, but because Calgary won both the spring and fall seasons, I think they deserve to win this championship. And I think playing the second leg at home at Spruce Meadows, Calgary should have an advantage there. I feel like Forge might go up with the first game being in Hamilton, probably 1-0. Hamilton has scored one goal in every single game those two teams have played this season. It's actually bizarre. Every single game between Hamilton and Calgary has been either 1-0 for Hamilton or 2-1 for the Cavalry. But I believe that Calgary are going to win. They are the better team. They proved that they can beat Hamilton in the Canadian Championship in a two-game home-and-home series. So they've already done it once. They just need to do it for a second time. And I think just with the run they had in the Canadian Championship, Calgary has experience winning these types of series. They did it three times in the Canadian Championship. Hamilton played two of these series through the Canadian Championship and the CONCACAF League, and they won one of them. So I think Calgary has the upper hand. They've proven that they are better in home and home series and they are my pick to win the Canadian Premier League. But now before I end, because it is a new fledging league, we need to talk about sustainability, which means attendance. Calgary averaged 3,292 people a game over the season, which puts them fourth overall in attendance. That actually is, for them, pretty good. Going into the season, there was a lot of worry about Calgary's high ticket prices and how they would be able to sell tickets with them just being ridiculously overpriced and I mean I guess people were willing to pay that much. It helped that Calgary was winning. Honestly, thank God that the Cavalry were fantastic this season because going into the season they were my pick to be the laughing stock of the league, the most mismanaged team of the league. Uh, but they ended up being very good on the field and because of that people came to watch them play and the team that I thought attendance was going to be the biggest issue for turned out not to have any issues with attendance at all. Hamilton Forge FC led the league with attendance of 6,588. Yes, that was boosted by the inaugural game where they gave away a bunch of tickets to free and 17,600 people were there. But overall, Hamilton was able to regularly draw over 5,000 people. Their lowest attendance for the season was higher than most teams average, which is just great for them. However, they are going to be shutting down the west side of the stadium next year. They're only going to have fans on the east side where the TV cameras is pointing. That's disappointing. One of a couple teams that's actually lowering the capacity of their stadiums after the first season, which is disappointing, but for Hamilton, playing in a CFL stadium is highly ambitious, and using 10,000 plus seats of that capacity for a league that was hoping that its best teams would average 6,000 people a game was highly ambitious. And Hamilton's overall attendance was right around what was expected of the top viewed CPL teams this season. But again, because they just played in such a big stadium, it looked like it was lower than that, and that was bad for the one soccer and when it was on CBC, CBC cameras. So they just want to tighten it up, make it look fuller on TV, which is going to be very, very important next year, especially if more games get broadcast to CBC, which, fingers crossed, I think they will. But overall, Hamilton Forge led the league in attendance, and I'm not concerned in the fact that they are closing off half the stadium. I think in a couple of years, they'll open up the other half again, because this team, I think, can take off. York 9! 2,668 people per game last in the CPL. York 9's attendance struggles. You know, they had a lot of problems with how they wanted to reach out and get people to come to their games. They did not advertise very much in York Region or in Toronto. Their big play was to give away tickets to a lot of youth teams and hope that they could get the kids coming to their games, which is a great plan 
if your games aren't almost exclusively on Saturday afternoons when all these youth teams are playing. So great that you're trying to identify a target audience who actually enjoys soccer, but just the timing of their games were very, very poor because they tried to do the Saturday afternoon games so that they wouldn't be playing at the same time as TFC, who typically plays Saturday nights, and that just happened to be when their target audience was busy. I really liked the setup they had in their stadium this year. It's a shame that for next year they're eliminating the supporter section, that safe standing area. It was very, very empty looking at highlights and whatnot, but it looked like it had potential to be very, very fun. And that disappoints me that they're moving that, they're getting rid of the far side temporary stands that they only used twice, I think, during the first Hamilton game and their home opener, and then against Montreal in the Canadian Championship. So just having those stands sitting there empty and having those stands be the ones that the one soccer cameras looked at was not very good for appearances at all because it looked like there was no one at any game that they played when you were watching it on One Soccer or CBC when the games were on that. But with that York 9, they're changing their business model. I think they understand where they went wrong this season and they are trying to fix it and I think their attendance will go up a little bit next year, especially if the team starts performing better and they just market it better. Pacific FC average 3,102 people, good for fifth in the CPL. Pacific's in a tough spot because their stadium's hard to get to from Victorious Wolf out of town. But I think, given the fact that the team wasn't terrific, and obviously their stadium was basically being built throughout the season, that's a pretty respectable number. I think with the new grandstand being open for the whole season next year, and possibly the potential for just the team being better next season, this attendance number will also go up. Again, first year, it's hard to get people to come out and watch a new league. I'm not that concerned about Pacific right now. Winnipeg Valor, 5,335 people a game, good for a third in the CPL. The other team besides Hamilton that plays exclusively in a CFL arena, they I think made the right call year one and only selling one side of the stadium. It always looked fine on the highlights. Like, again, they have the trouble of only having 5,000 people in a stadium that can support over 30,000. So again, it's always going to look quite bare and that's again, not the Valor's fault. That's just the stadium that they play in. And it's good because it gives the team room to grow, room to expand into if they do get more popular. And I think they will get more popular over time and that stadium will start to get more and more full and more and more sections will be opened up. Winnipeg, again, they were not a very good team this year. They over averaged over 5,000 people a game. Just That's a great showing from them and their fans. FC Edmonton, 2,905. You're playing in an only Canadian league where every game is a game against cities that people recognize, and you sold less tickets than in your last NASL year. Second last in CPL attendance. They were not very good, and I think the numbers showed it. They also had some bad luck with bad weather hitting them a lot this season, which again, I think also hurt numbers. But come on, Edmonton. I think, I know that they're going to stick around for a long, long time, FC Edmonton is. Their owner has no reason to want to move. He stuck through after NASL shut down and wanted to be a part of the CPL. And I think just that commitment to Canadian soccer means that Edmonton will be around for a long time even if their attendance numbers aren't that great. But I feel like as this team, again, grows and as the league grows, the attendance will fix itself as more and more people start hearing about the Canadian Premier League and start wanting to come out and see these games. And the team that even though they came in last, just killed it attendance-wise, Halifax Wanderers, averaging 6,061 people a game, good for second place in the CPL. Wanderers grounds was packed every single game. Halifax went into a city that did not have a professional team there and filled that gap that Halifax needed. Halifax desperately needed a professional sports team and the Wanderers just went in took that spot. Their stadium is in a fantastic location right in downtown. They sold out almost every game. Every game was a near sellout. It just, Wanderers Grant is probably the best stadium to go to and play in in the CPL. 
they're already talking about expanding it. I know a couple teams are going and reducing their capacities after the season. Halifax is the only one that really should seriously be considering increasing it. I know Pacific's also increasing it just based off of they had plans to build more stadium later on. But Halifax, this was the stadium they initially planned to build. And now they said that they can feasibly add another 2,000 seats, get it up to 8,000. I think they would still probably be near sellouts every single time in that stadium too. This team just has a fantastic following and I think they are going to cement themselves as a major contender in Canadian soccer as a big name in Canadian soccer for years and years and years to come. So yeah, that is the first year of the Canadian Premier League. How do you think the season went? Do you think that this league is going to succeed moving forward and that it's going to get bigger than it already is moving forward? Let me know down below in the comments. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to see many more of my stuff, hit subscribe and I will see you next time.